Good morning. My name is Sruti Das Chaudhuri. I am working as a postdoctoral research associate in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of the University of Nebraska Lincoln, USA. The title of my presentation is Automated Phenotyping Analysis of Maze Plants Using Feasible Light Images. Brief introduction about myself. I received my B.Tech in Information Technology and M.Tech in Computer Science and Application from the University of Calcutta, India in 2005 and 2009 respectively. I worked as a full-time lecturer in Calcutta Institute of Engineering and Management for five years while pursuing my M.Tech. And then I moved to University of Warwick, England to pursue my PhD. I obtained my PhD from School of Engineering of the University of Warwick in 2013. And then I came to University of Nebraska Lincoln, USA in 2015 to conduct research on image-based plant phenotyping analysis. Image-based plant phenotyping analysis deals with the monitoring and quantification of phenotyping traits by analyzing the images of a plant often captured by different types of cameras like visible light, fluorescent, infrared, near infrared and hyperspectral in a controlled environment and the images are often captured at regular intervals. Now image based plant phenotyping analysis has several desirable advantages. Non-invasion that means phenotyping traits can be measured without damaging the plants. Automation very little or no manual intervention or human physical human labor is required. Scalable, that means a large population of plants can be analyzed in a relatively short period of time. Accuracy, the traits could be measured precisely and smart phenotyping, that means several advanced or extraneous phenotypes which are otherwise not possible to measure manually could be measured using computer vision algorithms. Contributions. We computed or we developed two fully automated software systems in OpenCV and C++ to introduce two novel phenotypes with a discussion on their significance from the viewpoint of plant science. We developed an algorithm to count the total number of leaves and measure the size of each leaf at different stages of life cycle as the plant grows. We released our first benchmark dataset called Panicoid Phenomap 1, which is publicly available online. Experimental analyses are performed to demonstrate the effectiveness of these phenotypes on Panicoid Phenomap 1 to demonstrate their effectiveness regulated by genetic variation. We classify plant phenotyping analysis into two categories, holistic analysis and component-based analysis. Holistic analysis considers the whole plant as a single object and measures its geometrical shape attributes, whereas component-based analysis considers the individual parts of a plant that is stems and leaves separately to compute phenotypes. Holistic analysis is further classified into two categories, primary or basic, derived or advanced. Primary or basic holistic analysis computes phenotypes by considering the individual attributes of the basic geometric shape. Derived or advanced holistic phenotyping analysis combines two or more primary or basic phenotypes to compute advanced phenotypes. Component-based analysis considers the individual attributes, individual parts of a plant to compute phenotype, and we have found out several component and holistic based phenotyping analysis. This list is not exhaustive. We are trying to find out more for each category. Holistic phenotyping analysis. Figure A shows the original image of a corn plant. 
figure B shows the corresponding binary image and figure C shows the computed holistic phenotypes which are primary or basic. That is the green circle which is minimum enclosing bounding circle measures the roundedness. The convex hull shown in yellow color measures the size of the plant and the height of the plant could be computed by the height of the bounding box, rectangular bounding box as shown in red. Derived holistic phenotyping analysis. We introduced a new derived holistic phenotype which is called biangular convex hull area ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the area of the convex hull from a particular view as viewed from a side and the ratio of the a and the area of the convex hull which is viewed at a rotation of 90 degree. Now the video shows the plant convex hull enclosing the plant at side view 0 degree and side view 90 degree. Plant aspect ratio. Plant aspect ratio is defined as the ratio of the height of the bounding rectangle at side view and the diameter of the minimum enclosing bounding circle at the top view. Please note that the height of the bounding rectangle from the side view is not affected by the angle of leaves relative to the camera, but the apparent width of the plant is affected by the angle of leaves relative to the camera if we measure the width of the re bounding rectangle. That is why we have considered the diameter of the minimum enclosing circle at the top view which provides a good approximation of the actual width of a plant and which is unaffected by the angle of leaves relative to the camera. Significance of these phenotypes. Biangular convex hull area ratio is actually determines the rotation of the plant that means the phyllotaxy which is defined as the arrangement of leaves around the stem in response to light signals perceived through the phytochrome pathway in order to optimize light interception. Plant aspect ratio is providing the information on canopy architecture. Plants are not static but changing organisms and the growth pattern of the plant can be best interpreted by the total number of leaves and the size of each leaf. Thus curvature of leaves we also computed it provides the information of leaf drooping which is due to stress or due to drought stress specifically. We developed an algorithm to count the total number of leaves and measure the size of each leaf. These are the processing steps. Figure A shows the original image of the maize plant. Figure B is the background image. The background image is subtracted from the original image using frame differencing technique of background subtraction and the resulting grayscale image is shown in figure C. The grayscale image as shown in figure C is binarized to compute the binary image as shown in figure D. Now the binary image is reduced to one pixel white lines that means skeletonized and the skeleton image is shown in figure E. To detect the leaf tips and leaf nodes, we analyze the three cross three neighborhood of the skeleton image and the figure shows the skeleton with detected leaf tips and leaf nodes. Now to track each leaf, we start at the leaf tip and traverse along the skeleton until it meets at the leaf node. Each leaf thus detected is colored using different colors and finally the size of each leaf is measured by the number of pixels along the skeleton. And the final figure is shown in figure H. Our university is equipped with Lemnatics Canalyzer 3D high throughput plant phenotyping system. 
the university has the capacity to host 672 number of total number of plants with height up to 2.5 meters. It has three watering stations which can water the plant automatically to a target weight or a specific volume. We have rotating lifters which enables us to take 360 degree side view images. We have five different types of cameras which are visible light, fluorescent, infrared, near infrared and hyperspectral. We introduce our new benchmark data set called Panicoid Phenomap 1. It consists of images of mage plants of 31 genotypes. The images are captured with all different types of modalities that we have in our lemnotic system. And the data set is freely available online for a quick let me show you. You can go to the website and this is our this is our research team and this picture is shot in James Chernobyl's laboratory. And if you go to the link data set, a small form you need to fill up. And if you want to download it, just click here and you can freely download this data set. This is just the data URL, yes. For each of 31 genotypes, we have two or more plants. So we have computed the plant aspect ratio for each of 31 genotypes and these are the inferences that came up with our experimental analysis. As we can see the plant aspect ratio decreases significantly with time for most plants which shows that the plant width is more compared to the plant height. For some genotypes it decreases significantly but for some genotypes it varies between two fairly, uh, fairly similar values. And also we have found some genotypes have higher plant ratios, example PAG47 compared to the others which is more common B73 a common genotype. And these inferences demonstrate the potential of plant aspect ratio to be an effective phenotype regulated by genetic variation. We also computed heritability test for plant aspect ratio using box plots. The figure shows the box plot analysis. Most genotypes exhibited higher plant aspect ratios on day 50 than on day 25. And also we have found that PAG47 has the highest ratio on day 15 followed by PHW52 while PHW52 has the highest ratio on day 25. So let me skip one more slide for the biangular convexal ratio. I am running out of time. This is the conclusion which shows that image-based plant phenotyping is a non-destructive analysis with little manual intervention. We introduced two new holistic phenotypes, biangular convexal ratio and plant aspect ratio. We introduced a new algorithm for leaf count, internal distance and leaf size measurement and we have conducted enormous experimental analysis to show that these phenotypes have definitely genetic, has significance in genetic variation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.